What if you really can have it all? No, really. What if everything you think you desire is only a starting point for the life you are truly capable of creating? On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, we will explore topics from magic to practical step-by-step -step processes and everything in between. There's no place we won't go, nothing too ridiculous or weird, in the quest to live life as grand as possible. Hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer are the embodiment of Opposites Attract. Collectively, they're the summation of Megan's big vision coupled with Suzanne's knack of her details. Partnered in love and in business for the last five years, they're taking co-creation to a whole new level. Join Megan and Suzanne for Love, Life, and All Things Weird, where we will talk about living a life that's inspired, overflowing, and completely awesome. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Love, Life, and All Things Weird. I am your host, Megan, and my beautiful, lovely uh, partner, Suzanne. Hello, hello. <laughs> we, you know what's really funny is what? that, okay, we're talking about relationship today, right? And everybody's mm -hmm. been asking us to talk about this. And when we posted a couple weeks ago and we got tons of just, we want you to talk about this, we want you to talk about this, there are two people in the chat room today. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Because, like, There's okay, three. so uh, over three, three now? Yeah. Whoa. They're the, brave ones. They're the brave ones. See, this is what I think. This is my theory is that everybody likes the idea of, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about relationships. Let's talk about boo. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then when it comes right down to it, there's just a tiny bit of resistance. Hmm. A little bit. Well, and I want to talk about this because it really, it, it relates to relationship, but it also relates to life, which is that oftentimes we talk about wanting something, but when it never materializes, it's actually because we're not committed to that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like we have a counter commitment that's larger than that. So like a lot of us get way more of bitching about our relationships and being miserable than, um, than we think we'd like to put energy and effort into changing. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think that's kind of it. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, talk about relationship, do a relationship course, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, let's see how many show up for the radio show first. <laughs> because it's like, and, and I think it's, and I think it's actually in part because we've made it so hard. There's something in our culture that says relationships are hard work and blah, blah, blah. Well, who'd want to commit to that for hell's sakes? You know, yeah. if, and you know, personally, if it ain't fun, I ain't doing it. And it's like, and I feel like that we've made it so hard. So why the hell would we commit to it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think we actually put some compelling questions into our copy for the show. And I want to read those, if I may, because I think you may. that might be also why people are like kind of, I mean, we have some, they're all coming in now. They're, mm -hmm. all, our, all our regulars are coming in now. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot of energy on relationships and the dynamics of relationships. Um, in my opinion, it's like the Olympics of being human and being on this earth personally. That's what I feel like is uh, creating a healthy relationship has been the thing that has been the most elusive to me my whole life until – you know, now. So, um, so I totally, totally get it. But the, the copy that we have is a whole bunch of questions to kind of bring some, um, curiousness out of all of you. So have you ever felt rejected by your partner, even though you totally know it's not personal? Have you ever reacted to your significant other wanting to pursue something else? So they want to, go do a sport or they want to go be social and you it, it doesn't involve you and really you get, has that ever happened no never it's never okay. happened to me ever ever okay, good. ever mm -hmm. i don't even resonate with that at all never <laughs> um do you notice sometimes that you push your lover away and you don't have a good reason why have you ever craved more intimacy in your relationship but you really don't know how to create it so um, all of these questions have a theme. They all have something in common. Um, and we're calling it the secret or invisible tug of war of relationship. Um, because what we have found is that, you know, on the surface, these things might be happening and other things, right? Like 
um, if you look at statistics, they say that couples or um, people in relationship, they fight about money, they fight about sex, they fight about kids, um, they fight about their roles, right? And so um, that's what people say that, that's what the experts say that people are fighting about. So there's all these strategies about how to get through those topics. But what Megan and I have found both through our coaching, but also through our own relationship uh, for the last six years, is that there's something really much deeper and much more fundamental going on. Mm-hmm. Mo deep. Now, the thing about it is, is that, you know, most relationship therapists and coaches will tell you it's about communication. And, mm-hmm. and yes, I think, I mean, and there was a lot of requests for us talking about communication in the series, and, and we will touch on that because there are ways that if you communicate it in, um, in, a, in a way that's very much ownership and curiosity based that it actually goes a lot better. But actually, the dynamic around being close and being individuated and feeling like you're free and independent, um, that dynamic and your dance with it was set up before you could talk. And Mm -hmm. so the problem is, is that this is what's playing out in our relationships. And yet it is, um, we can't speak to it because it's from a time when we didn't speak. And so trying to talk, so what we do is we end up fighting about the money or who's taking out the trash or uh, we fight about sex. It's not about any of that shit. It's not about that shit, you guys. It is about this underlying dynamic. Now, when we're born, humans don't have very many instincts. One is that we have an in, a fear of falling. And the other two instincts are the desire to connect or to be intimate, to be close, to bond and the impulse to individuate. Well, isn't that interesting that we've given that been given these two opposite impulses? And we discover like when we're first born, it's all about the bonding. It's all about like kind of feeling into the mom and to kind of snuggling in there and like, ooh, I want to be part of you and I don't want to be separate from you. And then there's that place where we begin to crawl and to walk and we begin to individuate. And it's interesting because the games we play as children are actually games that facilitate that capacity to be able to start going back and forth between those two impulses, like peekaboo. Peekaboo is, I I love playing peekaboo. Peekaboo, and I've actually played it with adults that mm-hmm. have intimacy um, detachment stuff because it. Oh, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's all fun and games, so that it almost always they end up in tears because mm-hmm. it's that. Am I safe with you? And am I safe on my own? Am I safe to explore? Am I safe to individuate? And yeah. So, I, and I just, I just, because I really want to make this clear for those of you who are just popping in at twelve oh eight, like what we're talking about as far as this underlying dynamic is these two seemingly opposing basic needs that we have as human beings that we both want to individuate and we want connection. So. They're, they seem like opposites. They are, I mean, energetically, like, it, it, it really is very, very different energies, and yet those are two almost competing energies that are going on every single day that started when we were born. So, yeah, so what Megan's talking about as far as, like, that first, especially year of life, right, it's like so much connection, so much um, intimacy with mom, with dad, with the little family. Um, And then as the child crawls and walks and starts to talk and goes to preschool, there's this separation, right? And so that blueprint of how that went down with us sets that up for our lives and for the dynamics that we um, that we deal with in our relationships on a day-to-day basis. And this is not just our romantic relationships. This is also our family relationships, our friends, every single relationship that we um, that we are involved with. However, what I would say is that with the romantic relationship, um, we play it out in much more intensity um, because we're actually in part 
looking for our relationship. In our relationship, we're looking for our partner to fulfill or to make up for or to complete um, uh, what was missing for us in our little tiny childhood when we were little tiny bodies. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about what kind of screws up some of that dynamic. And it's not like, uh, you know, in therapy, we go right to bad parenting. It's not necessarily bad parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can be. It absolutely can be. But like if um, if our parent was too hands off, let's say they went to work really quick or something like that, and we actually individuated before had to individuate before that impulse in us was ready. Um, Mm -hmm. Oftentimes it creates uh, either one or the other, which is like a feeling of um, the loss of the connection. So those kind of people oftentimes are always looking for that bond or that connection to make up for that loss that they felt really early on. Um, Mm -hmm. But that can also turn into the other side, which is I don't need anybody. And mm-hmm. that kind of person can end up not like having a really hard time connecting or allowing intimacy or connection or closeness into their life. Um, the other is, is that the, uh, if we had a hovering parent, right, during the time we were individuating and exploring and like say they were just always scared and chasing after us and not wanting us to get hurt and stuff like that. What happens is, is that impulse to individuate and be free and, and, and that trust muscle that's built in that time gets uh, interrupted because we feel Mm -hmm. like we can't trust ourselves because our parent doesn't trust ourselves. And so we have that, a connection that um, intimacy equals smothering and equals Mm -hmm. not trusting. And Mm -hmm. so, and then we've got all this shite going on underneath the surface in our intimate relationships. And I've gone into, um, I do intensive sometimes with couples and I'll like, I'll go on vacation with them. I'll come up to their home with them. And I just actually begin to get them aware of all those little signals and all those, that little energy that runs just when you walk close to another person, just when you come into connection with another person. It's nuts. And it's like it doesn't matter if it's your significant or insignificant other or enjoyable other. It, it Like we're these signals are going off all the time because our bodies have this connection to Um, what connection is and what individuation is. And those signals are running all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love it. So um, there's so much to say about this. And that's kind of, that's the pause. (laughs) Because it's like, okay, how how deep down this rabbit hole do we go? (laughs) Because here's the dealio. When... um, What's happening oftentimes, so it's like there's all this interruption in that flow. So the flow between intimacy and connection, okay, should be very natural, right? It's like, oh, I want to connect right now. I want to be close. I want to commune, right? And then the impulse to go, oh, I want to go explore. Like that is as basic as it gets. Right. But the problem is, is that we have a bunch of stories about what that means. So Mm -hmm. when our partner goes off to explore, we go, you don't love me or whatever. You know, it's like all this stuff. And it it has actually nothing to do with us. It has to do with that little impulse. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if we had those impulses at the same time? Like if Mm -hmm. I wanted to be close and you wanted to be close at the same time, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, but guess what? It hardly ever happens. <laughs> oh, you know what? Somebody has a sick sense of humor out there. You know what I'm saying? It's like really like because here's the thing. Like this is something. This is an idea. This uh, principle we got from Gang Katie Hendricks, and I've been facilitating for 20 years. And I like it, this is what's underneath the relationship dance. I like <laughs> this is what's there, right? And it's like, I've been like just amazed at how these issues line up. And they used to talk about something called that there are splitter people and there are glomer people. So splitter people tend to regenerate in space. 
and in, in personal time. And glomer people tend to regenerate in connection. They tend towards connection more. And uh, it would be lovely if the glomers got together and the splitters got together, but not so much. So gener <laughs> generally, the splitter and the glomer find each other across a crowded room. So it's like, you know, the I want to cuddle. It's like, I need space, you know, is is the dance of most relationship. And yeah. and that's actually for a really good reason, because most glomers kind of went on a pendulum swing. They're they're using connection for something that it's not designed for. And the people on the other side are using independence as a way to avoid connection. And so there's mm -hmm. something to be learned in one another, like the, the glomer needs to learn how to open up and to let love in or the, the splitter and the glomer needs to know, needs to really actualize their independence and learn how to create space and freedom and design and create their own lives. And it's like, that's what we're trying to learn actually in this dance and in this dynamic. Well, yes, and what I would say, we have a question um, in the chat room about, like, how do you even know whether you're a glom or a splitter because, or both, right? And I think this is a really compelling question because when I first um, got together with Megan, um, I was a massive glomer, okay? And I'd always, always been the one that wanted to connect, that wanted to have quality time, that wanted to spend so much time with my partner, that, um, you know, divorced my first husband because he worked too much, right? So, and because he didn't ever spend time with the family. So traditionally for years and years and years, I was um, a glomer, right? I was totally wanting to connect in all the time and there was I was doing that because I did not feel okay with actually being me and being alone like I was so afraid of being alone that I felt like if I ended up with um, somebody anybody it was going to be better than being alone so I played out the glamour like on crack for like most of my relationship life and for the first part of it, it was really fun because in the infatuation stage, oftentimes the couple wants to be together, right? It want, they want to just hang out and love on each other and have a lot of sex and it's like, ooh, yay, right? And then there's this point in time where it's like, oh, we have a life. <laughs> oh, there's other people. Oh, right? And so, um, so when I, when we got out of that phase, and, you know, Megan had a whole community. She was a very busy coach. And um, I was just one person in her world. And so when um, that started to happen and she started to kind of individuate, I was, like, devastated. I thought, like, because I, here I thought that I'd found the one person that could be with me as much as I wanted them to be with me. And, you know, she promptly sat me down. I will remember this uh this conversation forever and she said Suzanne I love you so much and I could never love you enough for you to love yourself and really darling you have to get a life you have to get a life that I said it with love I really <laughs> did you did but you did mm -hmm. say those exact words where you said you have to get a life that's beyond me you have to go create um, something like have a hobby or um, or friendships or other things that fill you up besides me. I will never be able to fill up the gap. Um, and it was really powerful and profound um, for us and a huge turning point in our relationship um, because I absolutely did that. I I went out and found out who I was beyond relationship, beyond this partnership. I learned to be with myself. I learned to love my own company. I created a, a whole new business. I went and got more friends. And it was a very interesting thing because where I had been the glamour for our relationship and for so many years, um, all of a sudden, it was like the tables were turned, and I found that, oh, my God, my true nature, I really, really like a lot of space. I really like this individuation stuff, and I really love to be um, in my own space and uh, to the point of where I can't even have anybody in the house. And so um, Megan would say, um, 
uh, babe, <laughs> like, do you want to hang out with me? Like, are do you want to cuddle? Like, all of a sudden, the the whole thing, our whole dynamic changed, and it was like I became the splitter in a way, and she became the glomer. Like, she was um, searching me out for connection. And I would say that since then, um, don't you think we're probably about half and half now? Yeah, I think I actually believe that even though we tend towards one side of this spectrum in terms of regeneration, like, I think that it's still really true for me to regenerate, like, going out and playing tennis or something like that, right? Um, and, and like, going, like, I can go and be with a really good friend and that really regenerates me, right? But I also now require space to regenerate. And I feel like being on one side of the spectrum or the other, in part, is a reaction to something old, right? Because we actually have those we all have both of those impulses and it really is about smoothing out the glitches so that we can come in and out of that connection and that individuation place with total ease because mm -hmm. we all have both. So like a lot of people in the chat room are getting kind of confused. What's a splitter? What's a glomer? Ah, it's like basically we're utilizing this idea or using this language to help you see your own pendulum swing. But I feel like really where we're trying to get to is just really finding our own dance with that. Because I actually think that at different times in our life, we move towards one side of that spectrum or another, just depending on what's happening. So I feel like when I said I asked you to get a life, I really mm -hmm. feel like that was in part because you had some capacities that were trying to wake up. You had some capacities that were coming through. And it's like you birthed your genius. You birthed all these capacities. I think a lot of glomers are avoiding their genius. They're avoiding their potency by that, oh, I just want to be close. And so by me telling you to get a life, it like really allowed that and kind of forced that forward, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that, you know, like I don't need anybody, you know, is its own avoidance of like, sort of letting go of control and letting down barriers and really allowing the whole universe to contribute to us. And so it really is about finding that place and knowing that there's going to be some times where that impulse is more towards connection and sometimes where that impulse is more towards individuation. And that actually is occurring because of the process that's going on in us at the time. And, and mm -hmm. we'll probably go back. I'm guessing we'll go back and forth between those a lot in our lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. So we definitely have dived right into this um, topic, and we're going to go on break. And after we get back, we'll talk more about glomer and splitter and this idea of individuation and connection. So we'll see you soon. Shake a booty. Most people live in the land of either or. It's a scary and meager place where one can have either a happy relationship or a successful career, where we can have either lots of time and no money, or lots of money and no time to spend it. On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer bring you inspiration, awesome tools for transformation, and full permission to claim your most ridiculous life. Together, they are the embodiment of opposites attract, and the result is true synergistic power. Finding yourself roadside in either or? Megan and Suzanne are here to reintroduce you to one very powerful three-letter word. And. Simple? Yes. Effective? Absolutely. Welcome to the land of and. Listen to Love, Life, and All Things Weird every Wednesday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head. 
that when men assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The BARS is the first class in Access Consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a BARS session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a BARS class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is Love, Life, and All Things Weird with hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer. Are you scratching your head a bit? Let's chat. Call into the program today and let's find some answers. If you're in the U.S., call 815-880-8255. In Canada, call 613-800-8736 or Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also send questions or comments by sending an email to Suzanne P. Stoffer at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome, welcome back, everybody, to Love Life and All Things Weird. I'm Suzanne and Megan, my lovely partner in crime. We are talking about this fundamental dance that happens in relationship around individuation and connection and all of the stickiness that we have from going from individuation into connection, out of connection, into individuation, and how that can be super challenging, not only because we learned when we were one and two and three years old, we had kind of a blueprint for the stickiness around that, but also because in relationship, our partner is very often not exactly where we're at. And so they're not in the same exact rhythm or dance. And so what that can set up is feelings of rejection, feelings of abandonment, feelings of not being connected, or feelings like we're not being able to create intimacy, when in actuality, we're just on different places um, on that dance. So based on the massive action in our chat room right now, I'm just going to say everything this topic is bringing up for everybody and everywhere mm -hmm. where you're going fuzzy and confused. By the way, that is a fear response in the body. <laughs> so everywhere that, like all the fears and uh, definitions and everywhere that relationship has just been confusing and a big pile of poo, can we uncreate and destroy it, please? <laughs> yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot of pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. <laughs> you know what? I would like to know how many times you say the word poo in your clearing mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I lot. would say it's probably as much as pot and pock almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's all the... It's the most used word. Yes, so all the decisions, judgments, conclusions, rejections, projections, expectations, separations, and rejections you have around individuation and connection and this dance in relationship. Can we uncreate and destroy all of that? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and bock, all nine, boys, shorts and beyonds. And everywhere that you've aligned and agreed with one of these, right, with individuation, or I have to be free, or I'm better on my own, or I don't need anyone, or you've rejected and refused individuation, I can't be alone, I need somebody, I always have to be in relationship, can we uncreate and destroy all of that? Yes. Yes, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and bock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. I'm so, feeling a little bit lighter. Yes. So I just had this awareness, hun, while you were talking, and and yeah. that's why there's a there's a word that Access uses called incarceration that we incarcerate each other, mm -hmm. and it and that's when we need the other person to agree with us or we're trying to change another person, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have that, I have to be in relationship. Along with that comes we have to agree. We have to be at mm -hmm. the same place at the same time. And mm -hmm. so we end up trying to move or change our partner out of where they are so that they can be with us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then what that creates is incarceration, meaning that you and them get stuck in that tug of war of mm -hmm. like just basically I want you to change. You don't want to change. So we're both stuck in I want you to change and you don't want me to change. And then there's this, this sticky glue that kind of begins to become part of a dance that we do and also part of where we're trying to avoid one another because we feel those incarcerations. So we end up trying to pull away energy, trying to pull away um, intimacy, and we end up creating more like railroad track relationships sometimes uh, when there's that much incarceration. So everywhere that you have misidentified and misapplied incarceration for connection mm -hmm. and connection for incarceration, can we uncreate and destroy that, please? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyonds. Well, and all the connection points and stability points that you have about relationship and about your partner so that you guys can be in the soup together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, it's really interesting. There's been a lot of comments in the chat room about when two people in relationship are at different places in consciousness right, um, of like one person is, quote, more conscious than the other or more interested in kind of going down a path than the other person. And so the person that's, that's quote, more conscious wants to kind of pull that other person so that there's not that space, so there's not that separation between the two because there's fear that the relationship will end, that they won't be compatible. Um, and so all those are all connection points and stability points and very interesting points of view about what you are requiring your partner to do and to be and to show up as. And there's not much allowance in that. That is a ton of control and a ton of incarceration. So everything, all the energy that's being brought up around that, um, can we uncreate and destroy it? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine boy shorts and bands and all the implants um, associated with that. Can we uncreate and destroy that? Yes. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah. And any all the implants you have that you must be in a relationship to be successful in this reality. Mm -hmm. Can we uncreate and destroy that? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine boys, shorts and beyond. Like, look, look at the movies. Like, oh, like, you know, when there's that single friend, the the couple friends are always trying to set them up because mm -hmm. somehow they're less than them and they would be happier if only they were in relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it really, here's the thing, is like relationship is a choice. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get that? Relationship is a choice. It's not better than being single. <laughs> it's not worse than being single. It's simply mm -hmm. a choice. And that what we're trying to do is clear everything in the way of that actually being a choice for you. Mm -hmm. And and then to, from there, have a choice in every part of how you're co-creating that relationship so that it's joyful and fun for you. And uh, Shakti said in the, in the chat room earlier that, she actually feels like she's connected still in when she's taking space. And, and that's actually what Access talks about is that you don't have to be one or the other. You can be in communion with all things at all times. I can be on the tennis court and still be like present with or feeling where Suzanne is at the same time. So it's like there's an evolution from this sort of splitter glomer dynamic into a place where I'm, I am in communion with all things at all times and that's also a choice that you can and that you can feel into that. I mean, I have these moments uh late at night where I feel somebody in my life that maybe I haven't talked to or or spent time with and I feel them and I feel my communion with them and I take this moment, I contribute to them and I say I love you, right? And I haven't seen them for months and I'm still mm -hmm. in communion with them. And so that's kind of what I think if there's if there is a target that that's it is like really being so smooth in that dance between I'm wanting to physically connect in, I'm wanting to physically be here and I'm wanting to like be off on my own doing some some different adventure for myself. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with that, that that's kind of like the the advanced, um, you know, class and, and like the intention of, of how, where we could go and where we could be. So, you know, with, we have a, a controlling bitch in the chat room. Her name is actually controlling bitch. <laughs> that's what that's she not her real name. Herself. That's her, <laughs> that's her handle. Yeah, that's, that's her, her chat. ASN chat room handle. Yeah. That's her chat name, um, and she was talking about her um, her significant other or enjoyable other um, going on vacation with his family, and um, and how and the stuff that's coming up with her around that, and so kind of talking about this idea of how could you connect in with him, how could you actually be with him. Um, on that vacation, is there really separation? Um, is and it, like she was talking about going into the implant of jealousy because he's going with his ex. Um, and so, what if you know? What if you could really identify what was really happening with the implant there and uncreate and destroy um, the implant um, and see what's possible with your communion and connection in that process? And that's really what. I have been learning uh, for many years with Megan, like she was way better at connecting with me when she was apart from me. I just couldn't really get it. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know how to do it. And quite frankly, I just had so much woundedness from my own childhood. I had so much um like stuff, just really heavy stuff from my own childhood that was really preventing me from actually kind of getting to this place of of, of communion. Like I was in survival um, around this issue for lots and lots and lots of years. So maybe we could talk about that that piece, um, babe. Mm. A, about what what if you're just reacting all the time? What if this isn't easy for you? What if you have some childhood stuff that you that you can identify, but you don't really know how to to get over it or get through it? Mm-hmm. Thanks for asking, babes. So I I'm a fan of using whatever tool works in the moment, and I think like ultimately in relationship, the real work is destroying our points of view about relationship and about the other person all the time. And there's a, a tool in Access where they um, really invite you to uncreate and destroy your relationship every day because as soon as I go, oh, this is what my relationship is, then we tend to either uh, blow it up or <laughs> try to hang on to it and we kind of end up kind of squeezing it. And so that energy of uncreating and destroying and being in like, okay, what does our relationship want to be today is so potent. And, you know, uh, Suzanne and I have these moments all the time where it's like, oh, who are you today? And it's really fun. It's like I, we have new girlfriends all the time. But I think that, you know, ultimately we're always working on that. And sometimes there's something that's so sticky that it, re- in my experience, there's other tools required because mm-hmm. we have so much woundedness and there's so much uh, emotion kind of locked up in the body. And this is actually the tool because, Suzanne and I played this dynamic out so intensely, you guys. Like, honestly, I I have never fought like this in my whole Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Like, we would yell and scream and throw things. And, like, and even though I was a relationship coach and I knew what was happening, I could not find a tool to save my freaking ass. Like, Mm -hmm. I was, like, just in it. And I had somehow that intensity of our original connection had triggered some old PTSD for both of us. And so it's like we were tripping these wires just like walking in the same room with each other and we didn't even really know it. And we worked with a facilitator, we worked with a coach for a few months that he gave us this one tool and no matter what was happening, he basically just had us keep doing this tool. And this was the tool that got us out of survival. And Mm -hmm. and it actually got us to a place where we could jump into access and do access together and create the high, like vibration, joy filled relationship that's emerging now. But mm-hmm. I feel like that was the tool that we needed when we were so sticky. And I, we want to share it with you guys. And it looks like we're almost at break time. So maybe 
what I can do is set it up. And then when we come back, you guys will be all ready to go. Absolutely. So, here, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of a sticky bit, right, in, in relationship where you feel scared or jealous or um, you felt rejected or you felt um, sad that maybe your person was outgrowing you or um, that you feel like, oh, I just want to push him away. Like anything that has been a sticky bit for you in any relationship, it could be with a mom, it could be with a partner, it doesn't matter. And what I want you to do is like feel the energy of this situation, feel the, the, the emotion, the charge, the sticky or the heavy. And I want you to ask how old am I in this? How old am I being in this? And for some people, they'll get an image. They'll see like a two-year-old or that for me, I don't really see it as much as feel it. And kind of notice where in your body you feel the sticky, right? And put your hand on that place in your body, whether it's your chest or your leg or your head, just put your hand and actually just connect with that little one. Imagine that your adult self could just be there with that little self, the two-year-old or the one-year-old or the infant or however old, and just be present in kindness and caring with that part of yourself over the break. And we'll, we will do the next step when we come back. Most people live in the land of either or. It's a scary and meager place where one can have either a happy relationship or a successful career. Where we can have either lots of time and no money or lots of money and no time to spend it. On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer bring you inspiration, awesome tools for transformation, and full permission to claim your most ridiculous life. Together, they are the embodiment of opposites attract, and the result is true synergistic power. Finding yourself roadside in either or, Megan and Suzanne are here to reintroduce you to one very powerful three-letter word, and. Simple? Yes. Effective? Absolutely. Welcome to the land of and. Listen to Love, Life, and All Things Weird every Wednesday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is Love, Life, and All Things Weird with hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer. Are you scratching your head a bit? Let's chat. Call into the program today and let's find some answers. If you're in the U.S., call 815-880-8255. In Canada, call 613-800-8736 or Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also send questions or comments by sending an email to Suzanne P. Stoffer at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Okay, welcome back to Love Life and All Things Weird for part two of our exercise that we're taking you through. So you're hopefully spent a moment uh, playing, dancing, or holding or being present with a younger part of you. 
And this is what I want you to say to that little one. There's nothing wrong with you. It's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. I'm here to take care of you now. And I always love you. I'm here to take care of you now. And I always love you are the two most important parts of that. And the reason is, is that when we get into relationship, we basically are trying to find somebody who's going to give us everything our parents didn't. And at first we think we found that. That's why we get in that honeymoon phase and it's also la-di-da for the first, you know, three to three to eight months probably, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's like, oh, finally, he's going to give me what my dad never did or whatever is happening. But the problem is, is they don't have the manual to take care mm-hmm. of a three-year-old. It's not their mm-hmm. job to take care of your three-year-old. And um, it, the, whatever those missing experiences were, um, we have to grieve that. We have to grieve that, like, hey, I didn't get that need met, right? And the only person that now can change that or heal that is you. You have to take over the parenting of your little ones. You have got to quit giving that job to your person. It is not their job. And it feels, it, it's really, um, we probably all experience like feeling like our partners want them to take care of us and feeling just resentful. And the reason, and we push him away or whatever, and the reason is, is because it's not our job. And, and it also is probably bringing up stuff from our childhood where we had to be the parent and couldn't be the child, right? So there's all these kind of dynamics going on underneath the surface. But what our coach had us do is every time that we got really triggered, any time that you are in fight or flight or resist, react with your partner, it's a child self. Because, yeah, for the three-year-old, it's the end of the world. You know, your adult self can go, yeah, that's pro- I probably shouldn't be jealous of that. <laughs> but the child self is running the show. And we've given the keys and we've given the, you know, the care to basically somebody who's completely incompetent of caring for it, caring for Mm -hmm. that child self. And so he would actually, our coach would have us go into like separate rooms and be with our little ones until we were like human again, Mm -hmm. (laughs) until Mm -hmm. we weren't crazy. Mm -hmm. Would you want to add something to that? Yeah. And uh, like, again, you know, like, I love access tools, but, like, I'm creating and destroying my relationship while all of, while the, I had 10 little girls screaming inside of me would not have worked, okay? So you have to find the right tool for the right moment, like Megan suggested. This tool, this inner child process totally changed my life. I did this process every day for six months. For six months, and I had stuff that would come up every single day. I had so much woundedness. I had so many little girls that were freaking out, that were sad, that were rejected, that were hiding, that didn't trust, that weren't loved, all of this stuff, right, that would get angry, that would be jealous, all of this stuff, right? And I, all of that was going on in my relationship with Megan. And so no wonder it made it so crazy. Like I was a crazy person. And this is what I see all the time with people, with clients out there is like, it's the five-year-old, it's the seven-year-old, it's the 10-year-old that's actually doing that relationship It's not the adult. And so all that triggering, all of that getting on the drama triangle is actually just your little one saying, hey, pay attention to me. Hey, like be with me. Hey, love me. Be present with me. Tell me that it's going to be okay. Tell me it's not my fault, right? So I, if I can just, it's one of my favorite tools of all time. I've taught it probably a hundred or more times now to my clients and I still use it sometimes because 
it's absolutely so powerful. It can be so much a game changer. And I would say that now I can do um, Dane Here's process of who am I being, how old am I being, pot and pock. I can do that now, and it, it really is light, and I can shift the energy. Um, but there are times where something is tripped that's so, like, it seems to be so stuck in my body that I, I need a tool that somehow goes to that little that little wounded part in a more um, compassionate, caring, or present way to kind of unlock that energy. And so, you know, like whatever tools, I mean, we're, we try to teach as many tools as we can on this show because we know that different tools are required at different times. And just kind of ask yourself, what's required here? when you're sad, when you're hurting, when you're up in against this dance. Because the more, like what I found is that the more that Suzanne and I took 100% responsibility for our little ones and quit making the other person responsible to heal that little wounded self, that the more and more we could have a relationship between us that was adult based <laughs> um, and that it was just it, the relationship has grown so much has become so much more dynamic and the other part is guys when you start giving your child cells to your partner to raise um, that pretty much kills the sex because it's like <laughs> nobody wants to have sex with their kid right and so I hate to be blunt but it it really does kind of mess up the sex department too I just I'm just saying. Well, it just becomes an entanglement, right? Like the relationship isn't a relationship anymore. I mean, it is an entanglement. So we're talking about like kids out of control, freaking out on, you know, other kids out of control. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely your intimacy, the love, the joy, the playfulness just goes out the window. So, yeah, of course that's going to be at the effect of too. Mhm. Yeah, and I it's really um it's so powerful you guys to really take that and go okay, get more interested in your reaction than in what you think the other person is doing to you. Mhm. Cuz if you look at your reaction, if you really look at your reaction, it's like, well, what's up? Like <laughs> you know, I and I'm going to tell on you a little bit, hun, but like I remember when you used to have this big reaction to me playing tennis. And I would get, and of course, you know, it's like our dances are perfectly orchestrated because as a child, um, my parents were so controlling and so afraid that I was going to mess up like some of their other kids did. And so they watched me like a hawk. Like there was almost nothing that I could do without their uh, watchful gaze. And so that would trigger me, right? It's like, I just want a baby. <laughs> and I didn't mm -hmm. understand what your thing was with tennis. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, it, and it wasn't nothing it to wasn't, do with that. It had nothing to do with tennis. It's just that she had this whole other world that was separate from me. I didn't even know how to play tennis, right? And so mm -hmm. I was under this really weird idea, this this crazy collective consciousness thing that my um that that our habits or our talents or our hobbies had to be the same right mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. here she was having this whole other world with all these other people um and i was not a part of it right mm -hmm. i was completely i felt so separate and like and my world was that we're supposed to do everything together and we're supposed to have the same <laughs> The same, uh, that's what they said uh, compatibility was, is if you like to do the same stuff. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so, it didn't have anything to do with tennis. It didn't have anything mm -hmm. to do with any of it. It was all just my crazy points of view. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, guys, this is juicy. Like, there, there's so much happening still in the chat room, so much processing, so much people are going through layers and crying and showering and um <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Uh we've had some requests to teach a live workshop. We met, we're considering that. Uh but you know, I I think at the end of the day to me relationship is 
such a spiritual conscious journey if you let it be. If you allow whatever's coming up in relationship to teach you, it's like Gypsy Jen said, jealousy is such a huge messenger. Reaction's a huge messenger of any kind in relationship because it's telling you there's a wound here. And the purpose of relationship is to heal and clear those wounds and to come into joy and communion. Awesome. See you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to Love, Life, and All Things Weird. Megan and Suzanne will be back next Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. Be sure to tune in for more tips on how to live in the land of and and claim your marvelous, magical life.